So let's continue talking about partitional clustering. And in the last video, if you remember, we discussed this idea of k-means. The idea of mean was trying to identify each particle in, in the sample with a different color. And the color was assigned from proximity to this point, and this point was a kind of center of mass of the cluster. These points, called centroids, do not belong to the data set necessarily, and this can be problematic. So let me show you an example. So let's take one of these points and move it far away, and now let's calculate the centroid. And the problem is that this point is going to move far away, because this outlier is going to condition the location of that point. And Im immediately you can see the problem. So th those points which actually should belong to this cluster, but now we classify them as black or green or whatever. So what can we do? So let me introduce a new concept, and it's the concept of metoid. And the idea is really simple. So instead of calculating a location in space, which is the geometric center of this cluster, let's take a measure of dissimilarity or distance, and let's try to find one member of the group in which the distance from the other members of the group is minimal. So this central point, called Medoid, is going to be the representative of the whole cluster. So let me show you an example. So let's take this cluster here, and let's analyze a couple of points. You take a look at this point, this would be the distances to, do, to the other members of that group, and then we have this sort of distribution of distances. Let's try with this another one, and if you compare those distances, you can see that the mean value of the orange lines is larger than the mean value of the blue lines. If you repeat that process for all the members of this group, you conclude that this point is the most representative of all. And by representative, I mean that it's the one which minimizes the dissimilarity with all the members of the group. So let me introduce you PAM, which is a kind of k-means second generation. So first of all, we have to select k objects to become the metoids. And remember that this is the same problem that we have with k-means. So we have to say, if we have prior information, we, have, we can use that prior information. But otherwise, we have to select different values and then use some external validation like the silhouette method or the elbow method. The second step is going to calculate the distance, also go called the similarity matrix, and then assign every object to the closest metoid and then select a new method. So as you can see, only point 0.4 is different from k-means. And we have to iterate this problem until we end the algorithm. So easy peasy. OK, let's try with our data set again. We have this outlier there. And now we choose the number of clusters. Again, we don't know this in advance. So let's say that k equals 6, for instance. We initialize k-metoids randomly. And again, we choose from all the data set just six of them. Let's say these are the ones. And now we calculate the distance and assign the color to the closest metoid. In this case, we have the same coloring as before. And now we recalculate the metoids. Okay, and we do that and iterate. We'll do see that this point is going to move there. And, and you can see that the effect of the outlier is going to be relevant. So the only thing that could change the relevancy of the metoid would be to put this point, for instance, in this area. And maybe if we close this outlier there, maybe the method would be that outlier. But otherwise, this point is going to be completely irrelevant for the calculation. And this is the reason why PAM is so robust. Okay, let me show you how to do a PAM clustering using R. And it's really simple. So you have this function, PAM, in the cluster library. And the most relevant parameters are X and K. K is the data set, and K is the number of clusters predefined in the algorithm. We also have two, a couple of metrics, Euclidean and Manhattan. And, but basically, th these are the only parameters that we are going to tune. So if you apply that to, to this data set that we have discussed before, calling the functions is really simple. So you have the same syntax, more or less. Here I'm saying that the metric is going to be Manhattan, and, and that's because Manhattan is a little bit more, more robust than Euclidean distance. But this is not relevant here. What is relevant is that you can see that k-means is not as good as PAM classifying those outliers. Another example, you remember criminality in the US, you can go back to this video and take a look at the data. And now what if we use different attributes of the PAM output? So you can see that PAM output is what we receive back when we call the PAM function. And one of these attributes is metoid. And so we have the list of methods there. And this is really interesting, but you can see here that the most representative uh, state in, in one of the clusters is going to be New Mexico and the other cluster is going to be Nebraska. So the good thing with metoids is that we also have some information, not just a random point in space, but some point which is actually part of the data set. So in this example, you can see these two clusters according to PAM. And when you visualize that, you can see that these points there are going to be um, New Mexico and Nebraska there. Okay? So you can see that this is one point which is almost at the center. But the good thing is that you have even more information. Okay, if PAM is so wonderful, why not everybody is using PAM instead of k-means? Well, there are a couple of reasons. One reason is simplicity. Actually, k-means is so simple that 
you don't have to ex you can explain that to a child but the other reason is performance so actually pam is even worse than k-means in terms of memory and resources so there are several possibilities in order to improve that part and actually pam is only used if you have data sets which are not large enough because for a larger data set, let's say with a number of rows larger than a thousand, they are not going to perform very well. So let me show you a couple of algorithms that you deserve to know, but they are not very, very well known. So remember k-means, so this is the algorithm in, in, in a more, let's say, algorithmic way that you can download it here. And the idea is that at one step of the point, we are calculating the center of mass, and the center of mass is going to be the number of points in the cluster, and we are going to, to average the location of each point, okay? There is this model which is called k-means light and the main idea is using subsample and by subsample I mean that we're going to choose a number of samples and we're going to choose the size of each sample. What's the meaning of that? The meaning of that is that instead of playing, in, instead of doing k-means with the whole data set, we're just using a random selection of that data set. This is a kind of cross-validation but instead of repeating over and over again, we are doing this randomly at each step. And the good thing is that we can scale down to values that are Good in, very, very good in, in terms of performance, like 1,000 rows, and then we can calculate that. Okay, and the second part of the algorithm is that in the final step, when we assign the final points to the final clusters, we are again using some, some random selection that we've been collecting in this, uh, in this matrix. So you can see here that we're initializing this matrix to zero, and then we are appending different rows at different steps. What's the benefit of that? The benefit of that is that we don't need to compute the distance at the final step. So we, are, we have been computing this distance uh, over and over again. Okay, there is another algorithm well known, which is Clara. And Clara is a kind of PAM, but again, we are using some sampling, some sampling before calling PAM. Okay, what's the difference between this and k-means light? The difference is that here, at the final step, we are going to calculate the best collection of clusters. And we also have PAM light, which shares the same idea with Clara, but here you can see that that shares the same idea with k-means light. We are extracting information at, at each step of the iteration. So this is going to be faster in the end because th when we end this part of the algorithm, we already have the, the information about clusters and we don't need to calculate with the whole data set. We only need this partial data set. So let me show you a chart comparing performance. So you have different data sets there. Uh, these data sets are small, so there's not much difference there. But when you go to larger data sets, in this case, you can see that K-means light and PAM light are the winners of this competition. And essentially, this is all you need to know about partitional algorithms. There are more methods out there, but, but I think that K-means light and PAM light are probably the best things that you can use if you're working on a big data project.